Um, one, of the, one of the things that we really want to focus on as a church uh, is also the fact that, you know, looking forward, the family ministry is also about building something for the future in the sense of, you know, we want the next generation to view this as their church rather than as their parents' church. Um, and the next generation after that as their church rather than their parents and, you know, the older people's church. Uh, because, and that's I'm trying to capture that sense of imagination, I suppose, within, uh, within our fellowship and within our families. Uh, because I think that the, the scriptures that teach us throughout this, the Bible about building an inheritance, building uh, something where we leave a legacy, uh, it, it are all aimed at this sort of a purpose. And I think when we look at the, uh, the, the many sort of uh, lists of uh, doxologies in the, in the Bible where you see these lists of people and generations after generations, and it, it always puzzles me, why do they bother listing all these names again and again throughout the scriptures? But, you know, I think there's a reason for that. It's, it's important that, you know, you're building something over time. And, that, and it's not just within, within individual families, but to think of us as all of us, one family, helping the future of the church. Even if you're, you know, uh, you know single, you know, it's, it's still part of that. You're still part of this family, and, and you can contribute and help to build uh, something for the future. Let's uh, start in, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, and uh, we're going to read verse 3 to 5, and really our theme in the scripture tonight, uh, it says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, uh, spoil, or fade kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. I don't know if you've you know, ever studied out uh, Peter, um, and, and certainly this passage and even the first chapter, we could go on, it has so much and there is so much there that we could talk about and, and really you know, think about. But even in just that short scripture that we've just read, or I've just read, you know, there's an enormous amount to think about and really apply in terms of you know, just being excited about the fact that God has created this uh, uh, opportunity for us, you know, that we have an inheritance that's ready and waiting for us. And, and I think that in many ways, when we view you know, our what we're doing in our Christian lives as, you know, as husband and wife, as, as family, uh, as, as parents, as, as a church, as a wider church, you know, what are we doing uh, is to try and, you know, help the next generation to, you know, enter into this same sort of spirit. Uh, and I just think about, you know, when we think about the example that we have with God having for us an inheritance that never perished all or fade. It, you know, it's something very, very special. And I think, you know, for that, for, from that perspective, we can think about that and just think, wow. And, you know, if we can view, have the same view about what we're building um, and what we're, you know, working towards as individual Christians and as a church, you know, that we can build something that will have that kind of, you know, that be that special and have that view about it, I think it will motivate us in a special way. May I ask Joan to share us a little bit about uh, yes. some thoughts that uh, <coughs> yeah. she has on this? A prop. Right. Um, yeah, I, I'm at a situation now where both my parents have passed away, they've moved on, and um, since that time, I'm very aware that I think about death a lot more. Mm. I think about the fact that they've passed on, but I actually think about my own mortality a lot more as well. And um, I'm, I'm attending a course and we were asked to bring an object of significance with us to this course and explain why we brought it. And I brought along this little girl, this little bronze or brass girl. And it's something that I had 
as it were, inherited. When my mum died, my sister had been living with her, was collecting all her things, and there were a few objects. She said, do any of these interest you? Because an awful lot had to go to the charity shops. And it was like, I just instantly grabbed it. Now, it's not encrusted in diamonds or of any worth at all, but it's an inheritance. And I realized that as I spoke about this object, it represented something really deep. It was all about my my mum and how elegant, sophisticated, uh, loving she was. And, and this little girl, prim and proper, in her, it just said so much to me. And I just thought, you know, the power in a small object was all about my mum. And when I think about my mum, um, there are incredible traits that, again, since she's died, I say to myself, you know, if I could just be like, you know, if I could be calm like her, and if I could be, I, I, I really appreciate those incredible traits, and I, I desire to be like her, and I know I, I won't be able to. I can't be the exact copy, and my children won't be able to be the exact copy from me, but there was so much power in her spiritual qualities that they really, really stay with me, they motivate me to pass them on, despite the fact I'm failing all the time to do that, but that balanced mindset, that really, um, really surrendered spirit that she had, that um, God was in control. And you know, she actually became a disciple at the age of 78, but she had really lived her life with a, a love for God all those years. And where I stand today, I am so grateful that she passed on, she really actively passed on. And I think, as I said, I do feel like I feel so dismally in the calm temperament department. But at least I can talk about it with my children and I, they know what we're working towards. And um, yeah, it's, it's something very special, I think, to get to an age where you do consider your own mortality. Because as Christians, it's so different. It becomes exciting. What, what have I inherited? What do I really want my children to inherit? What does that look like? How can I present that to my children? So, I'm not to show my There, uh, just thinking about the whole topic. I mean, the, you know, obviously, there's there's an awful lot of uh, scriptures that relate around this idea. Um, but in the Proverbs, there are a few scriptures. Uh, in Proverbs 11, um, uh, chapter 29. Is that the one you wanted to speak to say something about as well? Just a little bit. Yeah. Um, Proverbs 11, sorry, chapter 11. Chapter 11, chapter 11 verse 29. Um, you know, it, it talks about, you know, when we think about, I mean, it, you know, even just when we think about building an inheritance or you know, receiving inheritance, it, it generally is something positive, isn't it? I mean, you know, in, in the sense of it's, it's, it's something that's been left by somebody else, you know, for you, um, and it, it's, it comes as something positive. But, you know, we can also leave an inheritance which isn't so positive. And in verse 29 it says, He who brings trouble on his family will only inherit the wind, and the fool will be a servant to the wise. Um, you wanted to add something on that, John? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really want to look at it from the angle of bringing trouble, but I suppose um, the fact of the matter is that trouble does come, yeah. um, as we well know, um, and it will continue to come. And I think, for me, um, family is just... God's given us such a great resource. Our relationship in families and in the family of the church is different. It's It's... You know, it's deep and personal, and we all know we've got to keep working at it. You know, there are many families where trouble comes, and the family ceases to be, it becomes really dysfunctional. And um, uh, I really liked it, actually, because I was reading the notes in the application Bible, and, and it talked about this, about a family being just such an incredible resource. Um, and it talked about how God has made it the, the place where there can be acceptance, you know, think about our family, but also think about this family. Acceptance, encouragement, guidance, and counsel. And I think for me, when troubles come, those things can get thrown out the window because of my heart being pulled emotionally. 
you know, struggle to be accepting or gracious in my heart. But I think the fact of the matter is we've got to really strive for, and I think for me, it's connection. Um, once you lose the connection and you give up on trying to connect, I'm thinking of, of situations in our family with the children. Once I cease to be able to connect with my children, it becomes very, very hard. So, um, you know, again, I think, you know, we have prayer, we have guidance, you know, how to approach uh, when things are in trouble. It's very easy to react to trouble. Um, but, you know, there's so many scriptures about, you know, talking, you know, wholesome talk, not unwholesome talk, and, and also always having grace in our hearts. And I think if we can strive for connection, healing, communication, and understanding, then hopefully we won't inherit any wind. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that, um, you know, um, oh, it's just gone out of my head. I was just thinking, uh, it's just thinking it's, it's gone there. Um, yeah, I just, yeah, to add on to the, what Joan was sharing about, uh, uh, I think, you know, just, just thinking about how we all and you know, even the wider church, not just you know the, 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 the marrieds and parents that are here, but you know how everybody in the church uh, can have um, can have an influence on you know on the next generation of Christians who who are going to lead our church. I mean, we think about it. You can't have you know Tim saying that standing up here until he's in his 70s or 80s leading the church, can we? We need to have it needs to be someone else. You can't have you know. Tidu and Nico and, and all the same guys doing the same thing all the time. We need the next generation to be coming up. We need the younger generation to be inspired and, and uh, energized to do that. And I think that all of us have, play a role in that. Uh, and it, it, what's important to recognize is that as we move forwards, it isn't necessarily going to look like it used to look or it did. It looks when we did it. You know, the next generation will do it in their way, and it'll, it'll look different, and that's okay. And we want to help build that because ultimately, what is it built on? You know, that scripture going back to uh, Peter, it says, you know, it's through faith uh, and shielded by God's power. It's you know, it's basically the inheritance is there. We are helping to build that and 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 reveal that to the next generation. Um, and it's just through faith that people are shielded. It isn't through how we do things, but it's really it's how we inspire and think about you know, our kids and other people's kids that you see, talk to, connect with, or even have a chance to do, uh, connect with. How can you help this to be exciting and, you know, and, and something amazing? Um, Proverbs 13.22, um, still going on this theme of uh, inheritance, uh, a more positive one rather than the last one. Uh, obviously, Joan had a good positive intent on that last one. Uh, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Uh, and that's an interesting thing. And then the negative is a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. But, okay. uh, but I think the good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. It's kind of saying, you know, we need to take the long view. Uh, it's not just the children, but it's the children's children. And uh, there are some grandparents here, I know. And, uh, you know, it, it's kind of... Uh, if we can capture that spirit as a church, I think that would be very, very special. That we're starting to build, not just so that we can have a great church, but we're thinking about our children's children having a great church. Uh, and that we continue to, you know, build something special. And I think if we can view our marriages, our families, our ministries, and our, our fellowship with that kind of a perspective, it helps us then to start thinking a little bit differently about, you know, what we're, what we're actually doing as in, uh, as, as a church overall. Anything you want to add to that, John? Um, well, I'd, I'd like to make reference to the fact that I don't know if many of you heard the talk that Ben Dannett and mm. the other, well, whilst we were away, we you listen to it online. online. The wonders of technology. Very good. And um, well, one thing, um, you know, we've listened to the sharing. It's, like, it's Roxy's come up sharing. And she was talking and she made reference, if you remember, I think, to 
you know, at prayer times at meals, you know, not feeling forced to pray, you know, they never did get sent up to their room, she said something like sent up to their room, but it really helped us because actually there were moments where we put our children under pressure, and it was like, don't you want to pray? Well, why don't you pray? Why don't, I think you ought to pray. <laughs> and actually hearing her say that really made me think, I really have to approach this with Joel a little bit differently. Um, I, I, we're not too pressured, but sometimes you don't really learn the lesson until later on. And um, that sort of thing, I found that whilst it was like a, ooh, I've made a mistake, I should never have done that. It's like, well, this is great because it's the children, the children's children, and we just need to adapt and grow together. So I just wanted to make mention. Mm -hmm. And then in Proverbs 20, uh, verse 21, um, and I think this is a, a very uh, insightful verse, actually. It says, an, inher an inheritance quickly gained at the beginning will not be blessed at the end. And I, I think what that's saying is that, you know, if we just quick fix, and we try to just, you know, we're not really sort of thinking it through, and we're not really committing it to prayer and, and you know, deep thinking, um, we're not, it's not going to uh, reap the same uh, rewards and uh, uh, benefits as God wants it to do. The blessings aren't going to be there. And it makes me always think of um, Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, in, uh, in Hebrews chapter 10, in verse 25, I think it is, um, it, it says here, you know, um, uh, no, I think it's a little bit early, hang on a minute. You know what, I'm going to go old school. <laughs> I can always find it easy when I look in the, the old, old Bible. It, it comes out. Um, yeah, sorry, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. <clears throat> I don't know why I couldn't see it in there, but it's the words before. Uh, where it says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. You know, I, I think this is a very important thing in that, you know, working in our, in our, in our church, with our families, in our marriages, you know, how much do we actually consider, you know, uh, about... You know, how much consideration do we really put as in terms of deep thought, discussion, and, and you know, prayer, and, and commit these things? The, the sorts of things that we want to, you know, implement in our marriages, in our children, in, in the church as a whole. How much time do we actually spend considering what we could do to help contribute to church in a better way, or to help, you know, build up the church? Uh, and build up our families and build up these things. And I, think, I find that quite challenging because I stop, you know, I stop thinking, you know, life is so busy, you get so busy just doing life. How much time do I stop and consider what I could be doing better from a spiritual point of view? I probably do more stopping and thinking and considering what I can do better from a business point of view than I do from a spiritual point of view, if I'm really honest. And I think that's, that's probably messed up, you know, because that isn't going to have the same uh, fruit at the end of the day. But, you know, going, going so thinking about that, that proverb in, in that context then, uh, I think is, you know, thinking that, well, when we try and just quick fix things, and, and this was much, I suppose, you know, what we've learned in, as, as, a, as a church and, and, and as a movement, that, that, that you know, isn't going to bear fruit in the same way as something that's going to take more consideration, more time. And I think, I know how we study the Bible with people today, even a lot more thought consideration goes into that. <laughs> and and uh, we, we, you know, we want to really get into the deep things to help people really go for the long haul. And I think, you know, when we think about it from a perspective of our families, that's, that's an important thing to consider as well. Um, and, and finally, you know, the final scripture we wanted just to talk, think about was Matthew 6, because, um, and, and I, I think Matthew 6 is uh, a scripture, again, that probably all of us would find, find pretty challenging um, as, we, as we think about it. But really, just about 
you know, where our treasure is, uh, and you know, where our hearts are, and just remembering that, you know, as we look at Matthew six, and particularly in verse twenty, that you know, are we storing up for ourselves treasures in heaven, um, uh, or are we are we not? Are, are we really storing up treasure just here that's going to be here today and gone tomorrow? And, and I think you know, probably when we think about it from from a perspective of our marriage and family and and, and our church. Uh, as a family and, and thinking about the children's children, you know, it, it's great to be really f focusing on storing up the real treasures and, and having that perspective. And I think when we view it with that perspective, it helps us to change uh, our thinking. So what, what I thought would be good just for the last five or ten minutes is, you know, thinking about this aspect of uh, inheritance, you know, and building that legacy. Maybe, you know, we can just open it up a little bit and we can have a bit of a think. Are there any things that you, you know, really uh, have found uh, you can share that you know, really uh, have inspired you or helped you or maybe made you think that would be, uh, have worked well, great in your family or your family group or something like that in terms of just really uh, building for that future and or what things do you think yeah, you know you could do? You know, I, I think not even necessarily to share it, but just to take some time to think what things that you could do in terms of you know helping to store treasure or build uh, inheritance uh, as a church. Um, you know, it'd be great if people would you know put some thought to that and just think about that and maybe maybe share some thoughts. Um, I don't know if I'm being very clear. And, uh, um, yes, Jane. It was actually something that Joan said that um, really uh, resonated with me. Actually, just about Joan's mum. And, um, you know, obviously many of us uh, here were, were privileged to know Joan's mum. And um, when I was in London, I, you know, I, I got to know Joan's mum then. And, you know, there were so many, you know, exceptional qualities that she had. But combined with her age, made her just the most, um, I suppose, inspirational woman. And I think sometimes as we're getting older, it's it's easy to, to think that you don't have the value, you know, because you might not have the energy or you might not have whatever, you know, as you did when you were sort of in your 20s and 30s. But I think there is, there is a, you know, there's a wisdom that God gives through age that it's so important not not to lose. And you know, that as we see, you know, the younger generations, those of us who are now, you know, the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, to really remember how valuable we are in the family, you know, and to, to freely give as God has given to us, you know, and not to just think, oh well, let's just let those generations go off and make their own mistakes or whatever, but you know, to really use use the wisdom and to, and to capture that, and I think you know, Joan's mum was just you know a really exceptional um, example of that. And you know, as Joan was sharing about it, you know, immediately things came into my mind, and I just thought, gosh, that was just so incredibly valuable, and I'll never forget. You know, and it'd be great for for all of us as we grow and as the church is growing up, you know, to be those people that again create those memories and that sense of, gosh, oh, those are things that we can never forget and that they can set standards as we, as we go on. Mm -hmm. I think the idea of creating memories as well, I mean, you know, I, I know for us as a family, we, you know, we always try and think about that, you know, to create great memories for our kids of the family. And I think if we can view church like that, I mean, even like, you know, youth camp this weekend is going to create great memories. I mean, I know even today when we talk to some of our older kids, you know, they share about some of the youth camps that they went to and some of the memories, even if the, the memories weren't, like, you know, they were frozen or something like that. <laughs> we were talking about Hill End, uh, uh, talking about the camps back at Hill End, which was, you know, if anyone went there, it was a dreadful place. But, uh, but you know, the memories were of the just, you know, it, it, it sticks a memory, and there was a significance to that, and so on. Yeah, uh, yeah. That point. yeah there, there have been numerous times that, um, I mean, now they tend to drive themselves because they've got the older siblings driving around preschool. <laughs> but when we used to come and do the drop on and the pick up from the bus stop, yeah. they go off the bus and they'll be sobbing. And they think, oh, was it, was, was it okay? And it's just that their hearts have been so moved. It's been, and probably a bit of lack of sleep. But, but it's amazing the power uh, of the team camp. And, you know, and the old 
loved ones are still wanting to go as the helpers, you know, it's it's an incredible power. Mm. 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 I think um, talking about family group and um, and sometimes, well, as, as in family, sometimes you think, oh, well, is there any sense in just keeping doing certain things that if, if you, you try to figure out something and, and do people come and what we've seen this summer is, is everybody, most, many people have been away, it's like, actually it's good to keep meeting together. Mm -hmm. If one person comes, it's great, but we've had a number of meetings where it's been really, really good, one, one of the best meetings, discussions would be three, four people and, and uh, some deep stuff has come out and it's, it's like the scripture was said, like, do not just give up meeting together regularly. Uh, and um, that, I think that's been really good for myself, but I think a number of, of the family group members have actually enjoyed that, yes, we're, we're in it together and, um, and it's worth it, mm -hmm. even here, but it builds an inheritance, it build, builds security, and uh, uh, when tough times come, like John says, trouble will come, people help us get over them together. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, as we're all family ministries, everyone here has a spouse, uh, I guess, um, well, more or less, except for mum, of course, they had one. But I mean, those of us, <laughs> those of us, the, um, thinking about, I mean, thinking about that uh, from a perspective, I mean, how, how much consideration, how much time do you even think about, you know, just in terms of marriage? Um, and I think that that's something, you know, just to stop and think about. Uh, you know, and we've been doing it, uh, you know, I've been doing it a lot in the last sort of six months. Um, and reflecting on, you know, what can I do better? Um, because, you know, I often find myself not doing terribly well in some areas. So, no. and, uh, and not encouraging my wife as much as I need to. Uh, so, you know, it, I have to say, you know, I've spent a lot of time in prayer this year uh, just thinking about that and wanting to sort of you know, consider how I can change and, and, and do better. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. True of me. Karen and I went away, went away for one night this week. Yeah, great. 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 <laughs> Alex had brought us a um, red letter day thing to go up to London to have a seven course tapas meal and to go to the sky bar and stuff. But I think that um, it is good just to sometimes, all oh, Karen and I can do when we finally get on our own and start talking about our kids. But there's really something wonderful about getting yourself away from family and appreciating family at the same time, you know, that really helps it because we just sit the same, we've got such wonderful kids and I think, it's imp you know, the trouble is, you know, trouble does come in when bring, families bring complications and you have to step back sometimes and say, hey, I'm so lucky, do you know what I mean, that, um, that I'm blessed with a family and then I think, you know, you're inspired to invest again no matter what stage you are at with, with your family, you know, and uh, like Charlotte's just been offered a new job today. And oh. she's, but she's got the job and she's really excited and you suddenly realise, you know, you're still there to give advice. It's just in a different in a different way. It's in a, not in a it's not in such an authoritative way, but you're still there to really give them advice. And I don't think no matter how old you are as a parent. Mm -hmm. You still have a great part to play with, people, with younger people, full stops. And, and I think it's in, interesting when you go back to that very first scripture in, in Peter that, you know, we've read about this inheritance that's never going to perish, spoil, or fade. But, you know, in the very next verse, it talks about, in this you greatly rejoice, for now you, you know, for, uh, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. You know, it's all of it, you know, there's this great blessing. And then it just says, well, but actually, but don't, you know, it's not all going to be just great. You're know, going to have to suffer. You know, word is suffer, <laughs> trials, yeah. and uh, and you know these are these are there in order to uh, uh, have come so that your faith, which is of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and re may result in praise, glory, and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. I think you know to to view that you know strife and trouble. Um, you know, if you're in a relationship, there's going to be trouble in your relationship at some point. I mean, that's just the reality of life. You know, if, if you put two people together, you know, it's not always going to go well. And, 
and the fact is, is how do we, you know, work through that, consider, and you know, and work together through that uh, to to get us to, you know, what, whatever we we need to learn, uh, and can we learn whatever we need to learn? Uh, and I suppose, you know, the, the challenge for us as we get older, and certainly, you know, I guess, you know, Joan and I are. are not you know the youngest here anymore, uh, but uh, by quite a, a shot. Some of us, some of the others here also. Uh, but uh, but the fact is, you know, do I recognise that this year for myself, particularly you know, just uh, as talking about you know, just in my marriage, how um, I need to still be able to learn and, and change and grow. And not just be, you know, well, this is the way I am. You know, I'm your husband. This is who I am. You're stuck with me as I am. And you have to put up with it, and that's that. You know, it, it, it isn't. It isn't that anymore. You know, I've got to say, well, you know, I still got to grow and change, even though I may not want to, because I, I you know, I may actually like being this way, but you know, maybe that's not great. And uh, I think it's great to be able to just be open to, you know, thinking in the longer term perspective, uh, how I can, you know, make uh, things different. Family and, and marriage and uh, within church. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think for me, like I've learned because um, I've been a Christian now since I was 20. I'm going to be 40 this year. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. 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 Come on. Yes. But um, I think one thing that really I've carried through with me is that I'm sure most people now come from a very dysfunctional background. And the way that the Marys and the family ministries really embraced me when I was at, in campus and as a single, I'll never forget. It's like a debt I can never ever repay. And so I've kind of carried that through and tried to teach my children the same. Like our home was given to us. We may own it, but the, you know, it's God's, it's God's house. And you know, we have a spare room and there's many teens or, or university people that may not even be Christians but come in and out of our house yeah. and stay with us. And the boys are always like, who's staying with us this summer? You know, <laughs> and they're, they're quite keen and eager to play host and to embrace new people and to love them. That's, amen. that's a great, I mean, so, we want to do a class all about that. So, yeah. you know, that's something we definitely want to share about. We're out of time. So, uh, amen. I hope that was uh, helpful. And, uh, Whoever needs to go and get with John T, uh, well, I suppose one of us here needs to do that. So. Mm -hmm.